फाइन यू सी सी द इमेज आके बैक्टीरिया ओके दीज आर क्लस्टर्ड सेल्स दैट यू आर सीइंग Let's talk about the characteristic features of Archaebacteria. And when I'm talking about Archaebacteria, just recall about what we studied in the Six Kingdom classification, or rather, the Three Domain classification proposed by Carl Woos. Yes. Okay. These are one of the most primitive organisms, and in fact, they are so ancient. Okay, they are so primitive. They are also known as the living fossils. They are known as the living fossils because of the fact that they are one of the earliest forms of life that still exist on Earth. Fine, great. Now, the speciality. I told you these are special. The special is it is that these archaebacteria they can tolerate adverse conditions. They can stay. They can stay alive in extreme habitats. For example, if there is a high temperature. Very high temperature, near about 80 degrees or 100 degrees, these bacteria can survive over there. Yes, if there's a high salt concentration, generally the normal cells they will die in that kind of salinity, but these archaea bacteria can survive over there. When there is high temperature as well as acidic conditions, then also these can survive. These are really special type of bacteria. Yes, and that's the reason you know what that Carl Woos. Wanted to separate it from the normal bacteria. Okay, great. If I talk about the cell wall, they have the cell wall, right? The the cell wall composition it's not peptidoglycan. It's hence it's called a pseudo peptidoglycan. And you'll talk about some of the species which is like methanogens. They have pseudo murine. Okay, they do so they don't have peptidoglycan. You have to understand this and remember this. So archaea bacteria do not have cell wall, but they do not have peptidoglycan. Great. Now let's move on a bit. Let's talk about the classification. There are three types we talked about. We'll talk more about the classification of the archaea bacteria. First, let's talk about the halophiles. Now, what are these halophiles? What does the name suggest? Halo. Halo. This word has come from the word saline. Salt concentration. High salt concentration. So these are the organisms which can tolerate high salt concentrations. Well, you know this classification that we're studying right now is based on which type of environment these type of bacteria are found on. Okay, their metabolic activities. Based on that, it has been classified into three types. So first type we are talking about is halophiles. Well, so found in extremely high salt concentrations, saline concentrations, saline environments. So one example is it's observed in the Great Lake, which is found in U.S. An example of the species is Halobacterium. You know, some of these halophiles. You see the reddish tinge over here in the diagram. Reddish. Yes, they have a pigment called carotenoid, and this pigment provides a special characteristic feature to these, in such that they help these cells. They in fact protect the cells from the harmful radiation, solar radiations. Great. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the next one. That is thermoacidophiles. What does this mean? Thermo is related to temperature. Acido. That means I'm talking about the pH, acidic or the basic conditions. Thermoacidophiles. Thermoacidophiles. They can tolerate both high temperature and highly acidic conditions. Well, if I tell you exactly, so they can tolerate a temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius and pH of about two, okay. The pH, if you just know the pH, I am sure you know the pH, right? And pH of two means it is highly, highly acidic. If I just drop an acid having a pH of two in my hand, trust me, it will just create a hole over here. It will melt my flesh, my skin. So it's really dangerous. But these bacteria can survive. Not all organisms, not all cells can survive under these conditions. Well, this is one example. It's found in Yellowstone acid pool in U.S. Thermococcus is an example. Fine. Next, methanogens. These are mostly found in the marsh areas, and also they stay as a symbiotic with. Uh, so these are found in uh, the marsh areas, and they stay in a symbiotic relationship where in the gut of the ruminants. For example, the cows, the buffaloes, and because of this, you know, they provide a great advantage. Because of this reason. The ruminants they can digest cellulose that is present where 
just recall we studied in the last session in the plants yes plant cell walls so cellulose can be digested and later on you will be studying that this is one of the reasons that we cannot digest cellulose but the the organisms the herbivorous organisms like the cow buffalo goat they can actually digest it fine an example is methanobacterium great one more additional advantage is so these methanogens in fact they are used by us they can act on the dung and they can produce biogas biogas can be produced by these methanogens fine so they help in fuel production biofuel production 